Joining me today is Erica Hand, and she is a business owner and consultant. And we're going to be talking about aligning purpose with passion in your side hustle journey. It's going to be really, really good because I have I've met over the last few months since I've met Erica. Like every time she shows up in the online, online space, I'm like paying attention. But before we get into it, of course, Erica, I have to give you a moment to shine and tell us more about yourself, anything you'd like us to know. And thank you so much for being here with me today. Take it away. Oh, well, my pleasure. And thank you for having me creating this space where we can, you know, exchange ideas, share, get to know each other. I am a family nurse practitioner. I'm also a psychiatric nurse practitioner. I started my own practice a couple of years ago. Um, and it really grew above and beyond what I expected. So now I really focus on, I focus on mainly helping other practitioners build and grow their practice because I found success and I feel like that exposure, that visibility, that knowledge that it can be done isn't out there. I didn't have that. So I want to be that person for others. Okay. I love that. So you're, you're busy. <laughs> you're busy. Busy, I, yes. Um, yeah. Yes. But a good kind of busy. Good kind of busy. Yes. And yes. you have just mentioned that you you want to provide a service for others in your field where you didn't have that service. So it sounds like you went through turning what you had started into like your main gig. And I love to ask the question of what your journey or your transition was like. So please tell me more and all the icky stuff too. Like if you if you struggled, I want to hear about the struggle. I want to hear about the challenges. But really, what was your journey like? To getting to where you are now yeah uh, so i definitely struggle and i think i talk about my struggle a lot online because i feel like the online space is so much of like unicorns and rainbows and everyone's great and you know like that's not realistic that's not our journey really to success so with my journey it really came from not feeling valued from feeling undervalued so how it all started was I was basically recruited by this company. They find nurse practitioners that, um, you know, for whatever reason, they feel like they have the qualities to help them grow, build, whatever. So they identified me as someone that could help them start an office in my local area. I found the location. We did the lease together. I mean, I'm talking about like bare bones building up. I mm. pretty much did all the hiring, marketing, like everything that's needed. Um, and I learned a lot. So throughout this process, you know, no complaints. I'm learning. We're growing. Things are, you know, doing pretty well. But I really didn't have the support. Like I saw a lot of their other offices and I don't know what that reason is, but I didn't have the support of like an actual marketing team that I really needed. You know, we had a marketer, but she was spread thin, you know, it wasn't, it's mm -hmm. no fault to her yeah. own. Like the resources just weren't allocated for what we needed. So I'm hustling. That's what I do. Like I am not going to fail. And at the end of the day, like it's my name on the line because everyone knows me as the face of this office. So I'm going out in the community. I'm building these connections, you know, so I'm really starting to, you know, grow it, but I'm asking for support, not receiving support. So it gets to a point where, it's doing pretty well. They bring in another provider. I'm like, okay, so we're really doing well at this point because we're paying someone else. Can I get my coins, right? Can I get what, you know, I'm deserving of? And the answer to that was you're already at the upper limit. Whose limit? Okay. What, what, where is this limit? I don't, I don't have a limit. You guys are doing well. And I know you're doing well because I can see everything because I helped. I know. I know the numbers. So it was really at that point where, you know, I was kind of like at a crossroad of do I stick with what I know? What's safe? I mean, everything was pretty much fine. I had a salary. I had paid time off. I could pretty much come and go as I wanted. You know, like there was no one really micromanaging me. But then the question of is this it? Do I deserve more? Am I worth more? Or Will this be it forever? Mm -hmm. And I think for me, and I think everyone has to ask themselves that question based off of where they are in their life, you know, their support. Not everyone is built to just walk away. So I definitely don't re recommend that. But for me, I had a lot of knowledge, right? And I had a skill set. And I was putting these little, you know, boxes together. I could connect the dots. And I knew so much. And that's where knowledge can be very dangerous, but mm -hmm. also helpful. 
because as you're showing me this stuff, which is really to help the business, you know, to help you. Oh, I'm taking notes. I'm learning and I'm growing. And not because I came with this plan, but because I'm always like, that's just me. I want to know more. I want to have these own little, you know, like tricks of the trade for myself because who knows when it might come in handy. So I came to a point where I was like, I did this. I can do this on my own. Why not? And, you know, my husband was very supportive. He said the same thing. He was like, why not? Like, what's what's stopping you? And so I decided, you know what? It's time to pull the trigger. And that's really how it happened. It was scary. I had, you know, like no help, no support, reached out to people that I would see online, you know, just people in the community or people online who, you know, had their own practices, crickets, nothing. I mean, no one. And I think it's more of like a nursing thing. Nurses are, you know, tend to be very territorial. You know, it's it's just kind of it's kind of a thing in our field where we kind of like to keep everything the same. Um, and change is really hard and letting people in. We kind of operate in these like little tribes on the unit. So that was the thing. And no one really wanted to share their experience or help me. Um, and, and not that I was asking for free. I mean, I was fully willing to pay because I, I know the, the value of time. But I just didn't get support for whatever reason. So I just figured it out. You know, I spent the time. I made the mistakes. I spent the money. I burned through the money. Um, mm. But at the end of the day, I built something. And from the reviews I'm getting and the referrals I'm getting and the feedback from my patients, it's working out just fine. One of the best decisions I made. Yeah, yeah. Congrats to you. Kudos to you for for seeing the opportunity. And I love how you just like, you you said knowledge is dangerous because I'm always talking about while you're at your nine to five, leveraging your nine to five, like walk mm -hmm. in there every day. Like, what can I learn today? What can I take away? Because those skills are very transferable and what you're learning at your nine to five, you can absolutely find a way to apply to, to your own business, right? So I, I love that you, you, were, you were able to do that. And I would like to add, on that point, put yourself in the position. If you're not given the opportunity, that's another thing that I learned is that a lot of people will stay in their role. Like, okay, there's a meeting. I, I have work to do. I can't go. There's a, a networking event or they're talking about this. They're not really in my, no, go and do the things, hear the things, invite yourself, make them tell you, no, get the knowledge, you know, what's going on. What are the changes that are happening? Because number one, that's job security, but also that's life security. You know, that's like your future security. You don't know what you don't know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And what would you say was your biggest like hurdle through this whole thing? From so, just making the decision to like where you are or to yeah, actually leaving, walking away. Like what did you like struggle with? It was, it was the knowledge gap and not that I don't know how to treat patients. I don't know how to really start a business. I have tried mm -hmm. other business ventures, right? And I wasn't successful. This is not my first rodeo, but this is the first time where I was really all in. I've started things on the side that I really needed to give 100% but couldn't because I had this career that I didn't want to let go. But this was the first time where I was like, you know what? It's this or bust. Like, I have no plan B. I'm going to figure it out. But that knowledge gap of being 100% a business owner without the comfort of a salary and staff mm. and, you know, all the things we take for granted. I have no, like, admin staff and billers and, you know, people who are talking to insurance. And there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes. So that part was difficult figuring it out and, you know, burning through money and time. But it was, again, it was all part of the journey that got me to a better process and approaching things more strategically. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and when you thought you made the, the transition, made the decision, made the transition, knowing that you burned through the money, the knowledge gap, all of that, there was so much to just be able to, to have to take on um, in order to be a successful full-time uh, business owner. Mm -hmm. And knowing that, but today we're talking about aligning purpose with, with passion. And when you do encounter that hurdle or that challenge, what's your practice to kind of say, okay, I did this for a reason. Let me keep going. Yeah, that is where you get to that point where purpose and passion align and you're understanding that this is what I'm meant to do. 
This is what I love doing. And this is what's going to fuel me to keep going. I find a lot of people will jump into, you know, different specialties or different industries or whatever's hot right now. Mm -hmm. And because it's so much work, like it's not, it's not sexy. It's not, it's not glitzy, glamorous. Like, you know, they make it out to be, there's a lot of work. And if Mm -hmm. you're in it just for the money, just for the financial gain, that is going to wear you down. You have to have something else that moves the needle for you. The ability to help people, the ability to see my clients get better, to even just like get off of medication or to hear someone, you know, started their own practice or is making money or left their job or, you know, no longer is working multiple jobs. That to me, that's rewarding. That's an impact. I don't care about like the likes and all of, you know, all of the little social metrics. But when you tell me you're able to change your life, oh, I can keep going all day. Like, fuel me. Mm -hmm. That's it for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And you weren't able to get that support in the beginning. How are you feeling now about that piece? Uh, uh, Is it now that people are thinking, oh, she's working. It's working out for her. Let me show up for her. (laughs) What's going on now? (laughs) Yeah, so here's the funny thing about support, right? You got to ask for it, right? Like, so Mm. people don't know that you, what I found out is people don't know that you need support if you don't look like you need support or you don't say you need support, right? So it's like, okay, well, she's doing the thing. She's, you know, she's happy. She's flourishing, da, 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 da. And in the background, like, you're drained, you're burned out. Yes, you love what you do, but you need these connections. You need people to say, hey, you know what? I think what you're doing is amazing. Or let's go grab coffee. Or you know what? Take a break. Or why don't you try doing it this way? That is really what's important. And until Mm -hmm. you share your story, until you become more vulnerable, you don't really get it to the extent that you can because it's very superficial otherwise. And that's, you know, that's part of your issue, which is what I found out about myself. Um, You know, I I shied away from social media. I am not a social media person. I'm just now getting to the point. Yeah, I'm just getting to the point where I'm like, okay, I've got to start using this. I am, you know, I have a virtual practice. I I talk to and consult people virtually unless they're locally. Um, But I don't really have a lot of time day to day. Most of the time with my patients, I'm back to back, back to back to back all day. You know, I meet with my clients. I consult. I do all of that. So, and then I have a family. So I have these two boys. I have this husband. So I am like stretched thin. I need the support, but I don't reach out for the support because I don't have time for the support. And then I'm lacking the support. So it's a whole thing. So now I'm like, okay, how do I find my people? Where, where are they and how do I fit them in? I got to get online. I have to get vocal. I need to tell my story. I need to share. And so that's what I'm in the process of doing. I'm reaching out, building great connections with people like yourself, having a good time, really connecting to people. People are, you know, seeing themselves in my story and really understanding that this is a journey and we all have unique abilities that we can use but that's the beauty of sharing you know i'm supporting people they're supporting me and it's the best thing i've seen who knew social media could be so good (laughs) what do you use it right absolutely you use it right yeah use it right that's the important thing that's the important thing and people i know i feel a lot of people oh nobody is supporting me and my friends and my family are supporting me Mm -hmm. i have a couple things on that i say did you start your business for your family and friends, if that's what it oh, is, yeah. you're just going to be selling to them. You're going to be exa- exhausting those leads quickly. And then the other thing is, like you said, people don't know what they don't know, they right? Are. We have to ask. We're, instead of making the assumption, make the ask. If they're seeing, because mm-hmm. I see you showing up online, she's engaging, and so great people are following her, and I want to engage with her content. So I'm going to think, yeah, Erica is, is killing the game. Um, I know. until you ask and people will say that about me, Oh my God, CJ, you are showing up everywhere and you're so consistent, but I'm like, yeah, but can you like share that podcast episode real quick? <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? That yes. Yeah. yeah I know. And people are always I know. so ready and willing to share for yeah. you and to support you, but we have to make the ask. So if somebody purpose is something that comes up a lot with, with side, with everyone, so with my side hustles, especially if they're in, I love that you were able to find alignment between what you did in your career and what you're doing now. Um, but for the ones that 
they're at a nine to five that they don't quite enjoy. It's at the point where like, it's just a paycheck. I'm just here. Mm -hmm. I got bills to pay. I want to have my own thing. I hear that a lot. I want to have my own thing. I want to be in control of my time. They haven't quite found their purpose. Or that, mm-hmm. like, you, like you mentioned, you try different things and to see. I, I, I'm I've bitter. been there. A yep. few side hustles. Right. <laughs> right. What do you think is important for someone to really be able to tap into their purpose and aligning their purpose with their passion? The only way you're going to find it is by doing. You get out, mm. you do, you try, you explore, you make mistakes, you talk to people, you connect, you find out that, oh, wait, this is a business? Oh, you can get paid from doing that. You mm. have to put yourself out there. You have to be comfortable with being uncomfortable, honestly. Yeah. You know, whether that's taking a ballet class, listening to different music, going to a different, you know, social meetup group. You've got to get out there and see what is needed talk to people, find the gap and always look at it from a business perspective. You know, how do I solve a problem? And is this something I can see myself doing 10 years from now? So it's a combination of like, okay, what does the world need? And what fills me up? Yes. Yeah. What fills me up? And I think people also tell me what you think about this. I think people also have to give themselves permission to want to find their purpose outside of the thing that they were told. Well, oh, yeah. our condition, right? Like we, we go to school, we get the education, we get the job. Now you have this job, you're secure. You've got, you know, paid time off and whatever else, insurance and the benefits. Mm-hmm. And, and you're, but you're realizing you're not feeling very fulfilled and you have to give yourself permission to get uncomfortable. Like you yep. said. And, uh, and that's where, you know, it's difficult to let go of those golden handcuffs because it's all the things that keep you just content enough, right? Like mm-hmm. you can take the trips or you can take the time off. But at the end of the day, if the quality of life isn't where you want it to be, then you've got to reallocate that time. Okay, take your time off, but use that time then to explore other options. Save 50 or or $100 from your paycheck. Use that to start your side hustle start investing in some things that is that is where the balance comes i don't think again i don't think everyone just has to leave their job cold turkey but i do think you need to be strategic and try to find out if there are other options out there that might work better for you and that's Mm -hmm. using your main hustle to start your side hustle and it's just trial and error and taking risk but uh, one Mm -hmm. other thing i wanted to say when you mentioned about the family and friends you know they're going to come from a place of love, right? And that love is going to also be from a place of fear. They don't want to see you fail. They know only what they know. So you sharing your ideas with them might come across as scary to them and they might want to warn you or protect you. So you have to understand that perspective too, that, okay, maybe their advice is just from a place of love and fear versus, Mm -hmm. you know, oh my gosh, I shouldn't do this. It's such a bad idea. Test it out. See, talk to some other people. Yeah. Yeah. And people, a lot of times they project their fears because Mm -hmm. if this is something you want to do, you want to step into the unknown, you want to get uncomfortable and they probably are saying, oh, I could never. Now they're they're going to project that fear of like, oh, wow, what are you doing? Are you sure about this? You sure you want to, you're leaving leaving the stable, the steady for the the uncertainty. Are you sure about that? So it is a lot to, and in the journey of finding your purpose and being able to align your purpose with your passion. It is again tap giving yourself that permission to say, I'm doing this for me. Exactly. Like what what yep. fills me up and how can I show up as the best version of myself to serve serve others? Just like like you're you're doing so beautifully, so eloquently. I must you say. as well. I have you to say well. I Thank you. I know, you know, Queens uplifting each other. That's what <laughs> it's all about around here. But I have to also um with with how I, you know, when we first like discovered each other and when we connected to, to record, um, this episode for the podcast, I got you and I got, I got to have the conversation with Erica and I knew you're going to, you know, hearing people, people hearing from you and you sharing and you're speaking. So like you have a determination in your voice Like you just, you have to do it. You have to try. And a lot of people do struggle with that, like just to pushing past that first, taking that first step of mm-hmm. like, oh my God, I'm doing something 
for myself. And right. People are trying to talk me out of it and eek, right? But it's just also remembering that first step, it could just be making the decision. It That's could just it. be saying, I'm going to find my purpose. And then mm-hmm. I say, like, okay, what, what do I really like? What do I really enjoy? Where do I really, what sparks joy in me? And trying the things, trying the trying things. The Thank things. you so much for sharing. So, okay. With all of that that you've said and you've shared, you've aligned your purpose with your passion. You took the risk on yourself. What do you have coming up? What are you working on? Um, what's, what's going on in Erica's world? So my course is available. Um, this is a course that it, it's built for business owners, practitioners. So we're talking, you know, nurses, nurse practitioners, physician assistants, practitioners who really want to use their skill set to start their own practice, whether that's on the side, whether that's full time, doesn't really matter. It's again, taking the risk to start the process. Um, I also have, you know, these, um, I guess I call it like lunch and learns or like many masterclass sessions that we all kind of just come together and discuss where they are in their journey, what's going on, um, you know, just like little tidbits of knowledge from me. And then I am doing, I think I'm bringing back the cohort sessions that I um, did before where I'll take in a group of, um, you know, business owners, practitioners that want to get the process started. And then we come together and talk about their journey, where they are, how to get to the next level, what's working for other people, because that was really helpful and successful. It's just, again, like time. So now I'm reallocating my time, changing my schedule a little bit to fit in some of the things that I really enjoy. Okay. And links to everything, of course, will be in the description. Anybody wants to check out, learn, especially if they are a practitioner. Um, that sounds like- Or know funny. a practitioner or been treated or by a practitioner, a practitioner have, a, or... have, a, have, a, have an appointment coming up and want to share with their practitioner. <laughs> you want to tap into their network and make the right. app, right. make the right. app to find your purpose. Will everything yeah. is, is definitely linked. But before I absolutely positively let you go, I got to ask you for a nugget. Do you have a nugget to share with our audience today? Um, You know what? I thought thought this might be a question. And you know what I thought about? Um, We were talking and you said, it's okay to cough. So I've had this cough, right? Um, Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh my gosh, I don't want to cough during this thing. But what you said really just reminded me of like, it's okay to make mistakes. It's okay to cough. Like, you'll be just fine. It's the human connection. You have to be willing to make mistakes. To understand that sometimes you're going to suck, you're going to get it wrong, but that gets you so much closer to what you're meant to do, what feels good to reduce like that anxiety of like, oh my gosh, let me hold it all together. No, look, I coughed and we're moving right along. So reduce the risk. It's okay to cough. I know. I've been holding one in two. I'm like, I don't want to interrupt <laughs> See? <my answer. laughs> See what I'm saying? I love that. Thank you so much for, for being here with me today, Erica. I knew that I would have so much fun, you know, connecting with yeah, you and, and learning from you and having, just having a conversation with you. I wish yeah. you so much continued success and oh growth. God. Kudos again to you on what you've done so far and what you're about to do. I love it. Thank you for being here. I wish you the same. Thank you so much, CJ.